Mr. Lumada. He will be starting soon. Oh, story time with Mr. Lumada. Where all your dreams come true. Oh, it brings to life your favorite stories with a great big smile. You won't leave lonely. Won't you start all the reading? I just can't wait to be here. Story time with Mr. Lamada. He will be starting soon. Oh. Story time with Mr. Lamada, where all your dreams come true. Oh, he brings to life your favorite stories with a great big smile. You won't leave lonely. You won't just start all the reading. I just can't wait to be here. Storytime, thank you so much for joining us here at Storytime. Thank you for being here. Yes, we're back, back, back on the six o'clock schedule. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I'm glad, I'm glad you're here wherever you're joining us from. And we do have a wonderful book to read together. And uh, welcome back. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed um, our visit yesterday with Grant Snyder, uh, amazing creator, and uh, lots of wonderful books that we've shared here on Storytime. So please do follow them. Um, on the socials and of course at their website thank you so much sign up for the newsletter thank you so much for being here with us on story time please as always let us know where you're joining in from and who is joining in with you i'm glad that we're here together to read another amazing book and this one today is coming to us from familiar's publishing familiar's books and this one is called how does our food grow it is written by Brooke Jordan and illustrations by Kay Widdison. And um, yeah, excited to share this one. Thank you indeed to Familius for allowing us to share this wonderful book here on Storytime. Please find it at your local library. Find it wherever else that you find books. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime today. Absolutely joyful to be here with you today. And um, yeah. How does our food grow? Where does it come from? Is that a question that you've asked? Well, we're going to be trying to look at that in this book today. Um, thank you so much for joining in. Good morning to you. How are you doing today? Uh, Miles and Owen, hoping you had a great birthday. I did. I did. I didn't think I would make it to uh, story time this morning, but we're here. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for, for joining in and thank you for being here with us. Yeah, um, good times, good times for sure. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Miles and Owen, good to see you both live. Thank you so much for joining us and um, I hope that you're having a lovely start to your Tuesday where you are. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. Yes, absolutely excited to share this book with you. Thank you indeed. And for those of you that are nearby, um, here in the Bay, if you can, please join myself and my good friend Nadia Solomon, and we'll be at Barnes & Noble, um, Walnut Creek, where we'll be looking at some new releases and just of course, just getting excited about books. And um, for those of you that are not able to make it, well, we will be um, live streaming that as well. So look out for that uh, coming up at about 11 a.m. this morning, 11 a.m. Pacific time. So um, 2 and other times, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. How Does Our Food Grow is coming up very shortly, written by Brooke Jordan and illustrations by Kay Winnison. Get excited for this one, and um, I will be reading this one to you. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime today. How does our food grow? What is your favorite food? What is growing in your garden or what was growing in your garden this summer? What is growing right now? Well, thank you so much for joining in Storytime. What is growing in your neighborhood? I'll be right back after this short break. Thank you for being here with us on Storytime. Hello, I'm Olalu Ogunyemi, 
officer in the United States Marine Corps, and author of Crow from the Shadow. You are tuned in with my brother on Storytime with Mr. LaMotta. Enjoy and God bless. Thank you. Ola Olu Ogunyemi, Crow from the Shadow, Horace the Horsefly, and of course, Billy Dipper's Time to Shine. Amazing books, all that we've featured here on Storytime. So please check them out. And of course, when you go to your local library, ask for them. If they don't have them yet, encourage them to bring them so you can enjoy them over and over again. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. Our book for today is this one, How Does Our Food Grow? This one is written by by Brooke Jordan and uh, illustrations by Kay Widdison. And we're reading this one with permission of the publishers, Familius Books. Thank you indeed for joining in. Get comfortable, get cozy. Here we go with our book for today. Do you recognize any of those? Yeah. <laughs> Did somebody say watermelon? Where is it? What else can you see? Did somebody say broccoli? <gasps> yes, you're right. Avocado, do you see it? Where is it? What else do you see on that? <laughs> so much to see, isn't it? Oh, good morning, Oscar. Thank you so much. And I'm so sorry I missed your call yesterday. I was out and about. So um, but I'll try and get you today. Let's let's definitely connect. Let's talk today. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for joining in and thank you for the birthday wishes as well. I hope you're well out there in Katete, Zambia. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you, Chad, Auntie Anne, and Auntie Pam. Thank you for joining us out in Nakitash, Louisiana. We just started reading our book right now and uh, we haven't even gotten past the end papers yet so you're on time thank you so much for joining in ah oh, thank you thank you and uh good morning to you as well lindley alicia and of course um lindley alicia and jemison and of course april and um oh lauren thank you so much for joining us here on story time <laughs> all right so here we go our book for today is how does our food grow? Written by Brooke Jordan, illustrations by Kate Widdison. And we're reading this one with permission of the publishers, Familius Books. Here we go. <laughs> what do you notice there? Can you name the fruits in this picture? <laughs> yeah. No. All right, here we go. Oh, there's more. There's more. Can you see? <laughs> How Does Our Food Grow? Written by Brooke Jordan. Illustrations by Kay Widdison. And I must say, this is written by Brooke Jordan with Kitchen Connection, in conjunction with Kitchen Connection. So here we go. <laughs> How does our food grow? Fruits and vegetables all taste great. <laughs> but how did they end up on your plate? The fresh and colorful foods you know come from farms. That's where they grow. Some grow underground and some hang, on the, hang from trees. Can you find them all? Let's look and see. Fruits, can you see? They're stunning, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. And good morning to you, Kathy, as well. Thank you for joining us out in Ohio. <laughs> ah. Yeah, fruits and vegetables all taste great. But how did they end up on your plate? The fresh and colorful foods you know come from farms. That's where they grow. Some grow underground and some hang from trees. Can you find them all? Let's look and see. What do you see? Can you name any of the fruits in that picture? And remember too, later on, you can always watch rewatch the video and pause the pictures and get to 
pick up all the different groups. Let's name a few. <gasps> What's that? Oh, I say it. Somebody say coin. You're right. <laughs> what else do you see in there? What else? Watermelon. Yeah, I see that too. Can you find it? <laughs> and cauliflower as well. Yeah. Oh. Fruits and vegetables all taste great. But how did they end up on your plate? Oh, I wanted to read this part too. Different fruits and vegetables grow all over the world. What have you seen growing where you live? So maybe when you're out and about today, what will you see? Is there anything still growing up? Or what have you seen grow in your neighborhood? <laughs> oh. Apples come in all colors and sizes. Some sweet, some tart, a bushel of surprises. They grow on trees, strong and tall. Then we pick them before they fall. Pears and figs come from orchards too. Find them around the world from China to Peru. Whoa. Did you know that there are hundreds of figs hundreds of varieties of apples grown around the world. How many different kinds have you tried? Hmm. <laughs> How many different kinds of apples have you tried? Apples come in all colors and sizes. Some sweet, some tart, a bushel of surprises. They grow on trees, strong and tall. Then we pick them before they fall. Pears and figs come from orchards too. Find them around the world, from China to Peru. Wow. <laughs> Did you know that there are hundreds of varieties of apples grown around the world? How many different kinds have you tried? <laughs> so maybe next time you're at the grocery store, look at all the different kinds of apples they have. Can you name them? Have you tried them all? <laughs> zucchini. I, I like zucchini. Zucchini grows well in sunshine and heat. It flav its flavor simply can't be beat. Under wide, flat leaves, you will find zucchini grows on a thick green vine. Vines grow lots of our favorite eats, like watermelon, pumpkin, and other trees. Yeah. What vines have you seen grow? Did you know you can even eat the flower of the zucchini plant? Fried squash blossoms are very popular in Italy. No. I love pumpkin leaves. They are popular in Zambia for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, zucchini grows well in sunshine and heat. Its flavor simply can't be beat. Under wide, flat leaves, you will find zucchini grows on a thick green vine. Vines grow lots of our favorite eats, like watermelon, pumpkin, and other treats. Did you know you can even eat the flower of the zucchini plant? Fried squash blossoms are very popular in Italy. Where else in the world? <laughs> ah, oh, strawberries. <laughs> strawberries are red and sweet. Where do they grow? Watch your feet. They grow on the forbs close to the ground. Some are heart-shaped and others more round. All berries are yummy and good for your brain. But be careful, the colorful juice might stain. Yeah, watch out. Don't wear that white shirt. <laughs> oh, fruits and vegetables do not have to have a perfect shape to be delicious. In fact, no matter the shape of your strawberries, apples, or carrots, they will give you the same nutrients. So next time you visit a market, give a funny looking fruit a try. 
<laughs> yeah, you should do that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Fruits and vegetables do not have to have a perfect shape to be delicious. In fact, no matter the shape of your strawberries and apples or carrots, they will give you the same nutrients. So next time you visit a market, give a funny looking fruit a try. And I know too that people sign up for boxes, right? Is it, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name. Somebody help me out. I know one of you knows out there um, where you can buy fruits that are not, you know, not perfectly shaped. Imperfect boxes, is it? I think it might be called imperfect boxes. And so you get all these fruits that have all kinds of weird shapes <laughs> or are weirdly shaped from what they should be. Yes, imperfect produce. Thank you. Thank you. I knew somebody would have my back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, April. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, yes, imperfect produce. All right, here we go. How does corn grow up high on a stove? Corn has ears, but it can't talk. Another name for corn is maize. People eat it worldwide in different ways. While corn on the cob is a vegetable, popcorn is considered a grain on your table. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, somebody at Misfits Market as well. Yes, there we go. Misfits Market, Imperfect Produce. I think it'd be fun to sign up just to see all the different shapes that, um, that will come through. <laughs> Thank you, Christine Costa. Thank you, April Booker. Appreciate you both. <laughs> yeah, grains need less water to grow than other kinds of food. They are good for the environment and for our bodies. Yeah. One of my favorite ways of eating corn or maize is um, the roasted kind. If you ever travel Zambia or um, that part of Africa, Southern Africa, you find a lot of um, it being roasted right on the roadside. And um, yeah, just fresh maize plopped on there onto, onto, onto the, the burner. And right there you get your roasted, um, your roasted corn or maize and it is delicious. Yeah. That's one of that's one of the ones I miss the most, actually. One of the foods I miss the most, uh, being away from home. Yeah. How does corn grow? Up high on a stalk. Corn's, corn has ears, but it can't talk. Another name for corn is maize. People eat it worldwide in different ways. While corn on the cob is vegetable, popcorn is considered a grain on your table. <laughs> Oh, I think that's that's the smile I have every time I eat corn too. There you go. <laughs> there are other stokes that you can eat. They grow in bunches, tall and neat. Asparagus grows from a rhizome root, a springtime crown that sprouts up tender shoots. These tasty spears are peaked, are packed with vitamin C. They can be purple or white, but are usually green. And I know I said vitamin C. Definitely my Zambian coming out in there. Vitamin C, as others would say. <laughs> Did you know there is a recipe for cooking asparagus in the world's oldest surviving cookbook? This means that people have been eating asparagus for a very long time. <laughs> Do you know all the fruits that we've read about so far? Was there anything that was new? Well, we keep going. <laughs> there are other stokes that you can eat. They grow in bunches, tall and neat. Asparagus grows from the rhizome root, a springtime crown that sprouts up tender shoots. These tasty spears are packed with vitamin C. They can be purple or white, but are usually green. <laughs> Have you seen a purple asparagus? Maybe white asparagus? Have you? Go on, next time you see it, take note. <laughs> Did you know that there is a recipe for cooking asparagus in the world's oldest surviving cookbook? 
This means that people have been eating asparagus for a very long time. <laughs> Do you like asparagus? <laughs> Um, it is asparagus that makes your pee smell smell particularly. Um, it has a particular smell and it affects the pee. I know. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking, and uh, one of the things I remember the first time I ate asparagus and thinking is like, what is wrong with my body? Is something going on? <laughs> Realize, nope, nope, just had asparagus. Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Another reason for for your another reason for your lunch. Bananas grow in crowd in a crowded bunch. They start out green and change to yellow. Bananas are sweet and plantains are more mellow. A banana's strong skin is a natural box, so you don't need extra packaging, and that totally rocks. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Because bananas are rich in nutrients, including potassium, they are eaten all around the world. In India, kids love banana fritters called gugule, and I hope I'm reading that correctly. In the United States, frozen bananas are a popular treat. I just tried recently tried out frozen bananas. I, I fifty fifty for me. <laughs> <laughs> they were covered in chocolate too, so it's not like they were not, you know, spruced up. But I think regular banana still stands for me. <laughs> in the United States, frozen bananas are a popular treat. In Venezuela, they fry and eat the peel. Hmm. How does your family eat bananas? Hmm. How does your family eat bananas? <laughs> Yeah, lots of different ways to eat bananas. Something to think about. Broccoli and cauliflower. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Are those your favorite? <laughs> for cousins, broccoli and cauliflower, our favorite part to eat is actually a flower. Those flower bud clusters are tree-like stalks. And tree-like stalks Ah, the signature style for Mr. Brock. M Mr. Brock. Broccoli plants can take the heat. So plant when it's cool and you are in for a treat. Ah. <laughs> I'll read that one more time. Here we go. For cousins, broccoli and cauliflower, our favorite part to eat is actually a flower. Those flower, but those flower bud clusters and tree like stalks are the signature style of Mr. Brock. Broccoli plants can't, can't take the heat. So plant when it's cool and you're in for a treat. Ah. Cauliflower and broccoli are called cruciferous vegetables. You can eat them raw, cooked with, cooked with, cooked with dip, or in soups and curries. What is your favorite way to eat broccoli? Is your favorite way to eat broccoli? I see banana smoothies from the last one. Yes. Oh, Pamela Courtney. Yes. Banana smoothies. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> How do you eat broccoli? You like to eat it with dip? You like to eat it in... Um, cooked or in soups and curries how do you eat it broccoli and cauliflower are called cruciferous vegetables you can eat them raw cooked with dip or in soups and curries what is your favorite way to eat broccoli <laughs> oh mashed into guacamole or on top of toast this Tropical fruit is a favorite for most. Avocados are packed with healthy fats, grow on a tree, and have a pit in the middle, just like lychee. With a tough, bumpy outside and creamy inside to share, some people call it an alligator pear. <laughs> oh, 
I love avocados. I love guacamole. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing that rarely misses. That is rarely missing from 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 my household. It takes an avocado tree three to five years to grow its first fruit, but after that, they produce avocados every year. Avocados are delicious and nutritious and a perfect fruit for babies just learning to eat solid food. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh. oh, I love avocados. I love avocados. <laughs> Probably my favorite of everything that we've read so far, read about so far. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you like avocados? How do you eat your avocados? <laughs> a prickly pineapple has a secret to hide. Sweet, yellow, juicy goodness inside. <laughs> they first grew in the rainforests of Brazil, where wise local farmers still harvest them with skill. Pineapples love climates with a tropical breeze, sunshine, rain, and tall palm trees. <laughs> the original name of a pineapple is Ananas Comosus. This is Guarani for fragrant and excellent fruit. The pineapple got its name in English because European explorers thought it looked like a pine cone. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah. I like fragrant and excellent fruit. Ananas comosas. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I love pineapples. I love pineapples. Here's a question though. Do you like pineapple on your pizza? Because I know that's the that's the debate that usually happens. <laughs> Do you like pineapple on your pizza? <laughs> Their tops peeking out from underground, beneath the soil, what surprises can be found? Their tops peeking out from underground, beneath the soil, what are the surprises? What surprises can be found? Potatoes grown in tidy rows give us energy and help us grow. From hashed to mashed to sweet potato to sweet potato pie, you've got to give different potatoes a try. <laughs> yeah, did you know there are more than four thousand species of potatoes grown in the Andes Mountains in the Andes Mountains in South America? Potatoes come in white, orange, purple, among other colors, and can grow well in a variety of climates and on almost every continent. Whoa. Oh, what is that? We found large avocado seedling in our compost bin, so we planted it in a pot. Now we have an almost five foot tall avocado tree in our in our house oh my goodness but we don't expect it to grow fruit oh i hope it does even just one <laughs> that's so cool and way to nature it to nurture it too <laughs> oh, yeah avocados if it starts having fruit you know where i'm going to visit next we love to eat legumes um especially beans. Serve them with rice for a complete protein. Edamame, black beans, soy or chickpeas, pinto or kidney beans. More? Yes, yes, please. And one more bean we can't forget, cacao. Cacao beans give us chocolate. <sighs> the beans, peas and lentils we eat called pulses are the seeds of legume plants. They give us protein and energy, but they require less water and fuel from the earth to grow than other plants. Yeah. Here we go. 
go. So many different kinds of beans. What have you tried out recently? <laughs> yeah. So much. So much. Here we have another bean. This one is quite long and green. The beans, pods, and leaves all have a nice taste. When you eat the whole thing, nothing goes to waste. Green beans grow quickly and are gentle on soil. Freeze for later or try them seasoned and dried. Ah, oh, yes, green beans are delicious, aren't they? <laughs> green beans have fun names in different countries. Runner beans, strong beans, snake beans, and long beans. Do you like to eat them crunchy or soft? <laughs> Do they have a funny name in your part of the world? <laughs> oh, thank you, Ari. Thank you, Ari. Appreciate you. <laughs> so much love. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have a different name for green beans in your part of the world? <laughs> Sometimes food is shipped over land and sea, but we can also choose to eat locally. Markets and food stands have a rainbow of choices, and farmers, your neighbors, are wise local voices. Whether it's yuzu, lentils, or pomegranate, eat food grown nearby. Eating food grown nearby is good for you and the planet. Have you ever met a farmer? What is one question you'd want to ask the farmer who grows your food? Something to think about. What is the one question you would like to ask the farmer who grows your food? Maybe it's two questions, maybe three. <laughs> and that is the end, of course, of our book. And there's different things on the back here that you could read. So I hope that you're able to get this book from um, your local library and just check out um, the glossary at the back and the extra information that you have as well. Yeah, so lots and lots to enjoy. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this delicious book that we were reading today. It is called How Does Food Grow? I hope it has gotten you thinking and wanting you to do more research. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. This one is written by Brooke Jordan, illustrations by Kate Widdison, and we were reading it with permission of the publishers, Familius Books. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime today. I'm glad that we were here together. I'll catch you on the other side of this very short break when we are back for more Storytime. You're watching... <laughs> Story time with Maple and Cypress. Just kidding. You're huh? watching Story Time with Mr. Lamada. <laughs> Always gets me. Always gets me. Thank you, Ari. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Story Time. Thank you, Deep, for joining in Story Time. And glad you are here. Um, yes. Good morning to you. One more time, too. Um, um, you're saying happy belated birthday. Well, thank you so much from the Osborne family. I oh, appreciate you. Everyone's awake today. Lauren, April, Jemison, Alicia, and Lindley send our morning smiles to you. Well, thank you so much for joining in. I'm so glad you're all able to make it today. Thank you for being here, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much for joining in. You say, have a terrific Tuesday. Well, have a terrific Tuesday as well. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. Absolutely appreciate you. Thank you indeed. Megan, thank you one more time. And of course, Ari, and you say, happy belated birthday. Well, thank you. Hope you had a, um, all the morning ingredients you needed for the day i did i did i was here first of all with um with um with you all and uh, hopefully you were able to catch the recording later on as well so it was always good it's always good to be here and it was a great way to start the day i felt like it always grounds me and um sets me up um for 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 a good day so yes yes indeed all the morning ingredients were there 
everything I needed was there for sure. And um, yeah, long may that continue. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. Who else was with us? Thank you for joining in. Kristen, Costa, Miles and Owen, thank you for joining us out there in Massachusetts. Thank you for being here with us on Storytime. And indeed, thank you as well for helping out with all the terms. When I forgot the term, thank you. Thank you indeed for sharing. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. Oscar Mwanagulanga, how are you doing today? Thank you for being here out in Katete, Zambia. Thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to see you here. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. And again, apologies. I'm sorry I missed your call yesterday, but we'll be catching up later today for sure. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. Pamela Courtney, thank you for being here. Auntie Anne and of course, Chad, thank you for being here with us on Storytime. Absolutely appreciate you. Have a wonderful day out there in Nakitash, Louisiana. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. Yes, indeed. Good morning to everybody that is here. Beautiful illustrations from the book. I love it. I'm glad that you did too. Thank you for being here with us on Storytime. A beautiful book indeed. How does our food grow? Hopefully it's given us something to think about. And of course, too, thinking about is it possible to eat locally? Is it possible to support those uh, local markets and be kinder to the environment? I know that it's not always possible in places, but I hope that you can get as much as possible from close by. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. Absolutely appreciate you. Kathy Keith, thank you for joining us out in Ohio. Luna, I hope that you're joining in later on as well. Thank you for being here with us on Storytime and hopefully maybe with a crunchy fruit, crunchy vegetable to enjoy Storytime. Thank you so much for being here, friends. Absolutely appreciate you. And one more time, thank you. So glad you're awake and able to join us this morning. Lauren, April, Jemison, Alicia, and Lindley out in Orange County. Thank you for being here. Have a terrific Tuesday too. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. Thank you for all the love. Absolutely love it. Um, Harry, thank you for joining us out there in Kentucky. Thank you. Thank you indeed. And of course, Christian Costa, oh, all the best with your avocado um, avocado tree. I hope, I hope it produces even just one, even just one fruit. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime, but I bet it still looks good. Thank you so much for being here. Miles and Owen, appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. One more time, Megan and Ari, thank you. Sending much love this way. Birthday love, well, appreciate you. Well received. Sending you hugs right back. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. <laughs> Yes, yes, Ari. <laughs> Cracks me up every time, every single time. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here with us on Storytime. You know, talk about safe places, friendly places, safe communities. Well, I appreciate each and every one of you and indeed for making Storytime a space that we can come to and laugh and indeed... Um, get to experience you know books and just you you know like just ponder the world as well because a lot is happening so thank you so much for being here with us on story time but also just get lost in our books as well and enjoy those worlds out there like today we were out in this amazing garden that has been prepared for us by um brooke jordan and Kay widdison and of course familiar books thank you so much for joining us here on story time we're back again tomorrow with two friends that are coming back and let's see if their friendship can last a lifetime. Evelyn Del Rey is moving away. This one coming from the amazing Meg Medina and the equally amazing Sonia Sanchez. Beautiful, beautiful book indeed. And we'll be reading this one with permission of the publishers, Candlewick. Press. So do join us tomorrow. Don't forget, we'll be right here on Storytime at 6 a.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. And they'll keep you updated with everything else that is coming. So please, please keep an eye out on Storytime socials. And of course, your Storytime here. We'll try and update you with everything that is coming your way. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're in the Bay, you know where to be today at 11. Come and join myself and Nadia Solomon. We will be at 1. Walnut Creek, Barnes and Noble, where we will be running around and enjoying reading all the new books and looking at all the new books. Yes, take me where books are. <laughs> Others say, take me to the ball game. No, take me where books are. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for joining in. Lots of fun expected. I cannot wait. And if you know Nadia Solomon, you know it'll be a lot of fun out there. So thank you so much for joining in. And I hope that you can join us. And I know some of you are far away, so we will be streaming that as well. Hopefully you can join us for a little bit or all of it. Why not? Thank you so much for joining in. And uh, if you have any books that you'd want us to particularly look for, if they're out there, please send them. Just send them a message. Send me a message and I'll make sure to look out for those when we are out there. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. And indeed, hope to see you later on at that event. Or maybe, you know, we'll be catching you online. Thank you so much. And this week, we do have amazing books. We've already got, had Grant Snyder visit us and we have so many wonderful books come our way, but we have three more to go. Evelyn Del Rey uh, is moving away, is coming tomorrow to story time. And then Can I Sit With You, a beautiful, sweet book that is coming too on Thursday. And then on Friday, great white shark yes we're going to be reading about the great white shark so be here and come and enjoy with us thank you so much for being here friends this has been story time for today this has been story time on this wonderful tuesday morning i really do hope it is a wonderful one for you as well i hope you have lots of snacks lots of vegetables lots of good good crunchy snacks out there today thank you so much for being here hugs to each and every one of you and i hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day Bye-bye. <laughs>